what you see behind me is one of the world's biggest Land Rover festivals. This is where people come every year in England to uh, buy bits and pieces for their Land Rover projects, chat to other Land Rover owners, and basically do everything that Land Rovers are really good at. But what makes this show unique? No, not unique. There is another one, similar sized, in Peterborough in November, also in England, of 30 minutes, 40 minutes from here, that also caters to the Land Rover enthusiasts. And the best part about this is that if you're a Land Rover enthusiast and you have a kit, you have a, you have a project, a Land Rover project, you come here every year to get your bits and pieces. And what do I mean by bits and pieces? I'll show you now. Of what is for sale is to counteract a particular problem in Britain with Land Rovers and that is rust. People will say that Land Rovers don't rust, they're made out of aluminium. They're not made out of aluminium, they have some aluminium bits on them but they're mostly steel and they rust. And so, so many of the components at this particular stand, so many of the components, just their brackets and their bits and pieces that, that um, replace components of the Land Rovers that are well known for rusting. So you'll have a perfectly good vehicle, mechanically really, really good, and spots of terrible rust on them. And so um, these companies take care of that. 1150, see what this one is. Let's go and see where this one got to in a minute. Let's go yeah, see but we're top, bottom, or in the middle. So what this is, is a <laughs> axle articulation <laughs> competition. It is all highly modified vehicles, 
and absolutely appropriate to Land Rover, if you ask me, because of all of the vehicles that I know of that have been made and delivered with good axle articulation. It is in fact a Land Rover product. It was the first Range Rover launched in 1970 and had an axle articulation of, if I remember correctly, 78 centimetres. These of course are highly modified. But that's what all, this is all about. A lot of people will ask me, what, what is a good vehicle to start overlanding and off-roading? Well, on the top of my list probably sits the Discovery 1. Reason? Cheapest chips. Two, lots of spare parts. Three, there are so many people building them that there's so much knowledge and, and, and insight into, into um, uh, Discovery 1 makes a great, great start. And because they're not particularly reliable, you'll learn a lot quickly. But they're great performers and they do so many things so well. So it's probably still remains to this day number one on my list for newbies into four-wheel driving and off-roading. The vehicles taking part in this competition are almost, well actually they are, they're exclusively um, Land Rover Discovery and Defender 90. Well, not all of them. This unusual vehicle is an Austin Tram. So how many centimetres do you think you're going to get? Um, not very far. Only just on the ramp, I'd have I, I, I think so. That's what's going to make it the most interesting out of all of them. <laughs> you know, I won't just be sent in to drive it. <laughs> well, you'll get a prize. Not sure which prize you'll get, but you'll get a prize. Yeah. <laughs> They call it the twist off. Nineteen fifty six, two point eight, big forty. It's fantastic. It is, and I'd say there's many of us waited a very. The winner has just been announced at one point four eight meters. There are also some marvellous examples of vehicles, particularly Defenders, and some nice expensive kit as well. Now the G4 Challenge, <clears throat> it was impressive. I mean, I think the orange is kind of works quite well for, for the G4, but compared to the original Camel Trophy, I felt it was very tame. Well, it was tame. I mean, just go and look at the videos and see what the G4 vehicles are doing and see what the Camel Trophy vehicles are doing. Now, this uh, Range Rover has an interesting story behind it. The driver is hoping to raise funds uh, in support of the RAF Benevolent Funds and he is going to be driving this Mark 1 Range Rover from Norfolk to Iceland. The challenge will take place in November from Norwich to Norfolk in Hammerfest to Hammerfest in Norway, 5,500 mile round trip to raise the profile of both Land Rover and the RAF Benevolent Fund, taking eight countries and temperatures to as low as minus 20 degrees Celsius and 23 hours of darkness when in Hammerfest. And I like this bit. Land Rover are renowned for its vehicles, endurance, adaptability and reliability. I'm looking forward to this challenge and thinking of ways to show people that you can achieve anything. He then goes on to tell about his brother who was blown up in Basra in the war and um, was very badly injured and the RF Benevolent Fund are supporting him in his recovery. And so, well, if you're interested in, um, in supporting this, uh, there is their website. More Range Rover classics. This is the Range Rover Register, a UK based organization documenting the owners of Range Rovers. I think they have a particular bent towards classics. And for that matter, so do I. So I've had a really, really nice day. I even got myself some little goodies, some switches for my Land Cruiser project. Um, I've got little LED lights and they're just nice, nicely made. 
and uh, 600 uh, cable ties for five pounds. So um, just, you don't need to be a Land Rover enthusiast to actually get the most out of this show. Just come and uh, just come and have a good time, and it's really really nice. And it's what I like about it is not too overly commercial. Lots of lots of DIY. Lots of lots of guys building vehicles. Um, yes, there is a lot of scrap. I, yeah, there is. Um, but that's part of the charm of it, actually. And I actually think I um, actually really had a nice day, and I think it's a great it's a great show. Not just for Land Rover enthusiasts. For all 4x4 enthusiasts. Thank you for watching. If you would like to take our relationship to the next level, support me on Patreon. Just $1 a month to support our video productions. Download everything I've ever made and watch them on the big screen on forexoverland.com. Or subscribe now on YouTube.